new digs. Yeah, I mean, we're a brand is, new studio, and this is post Adepticon as well. Right, exactly. Yeah, which is which is fun. Uh, that that always changes my perspective on everything when we come back from Adepticon. Yeah, but yeah, the new digs place looks awesome. It's coming together. Yeah, it's getting there. So with the new digs, we got some new videos. For yeah, you. we do. And this one, you showed us um, one of the orcs from the new Shadespire. That's right. Yeah, I'm addicted. I'm hooked on that game. Um, yeah, we're working on some some dirty metals. In the past, I, I did that video on Mr. Snakes for the Jungle Boys. Yep, yep. So these orcs are more the yellow style orcs. So everything but their skin pretty much has some green tone in it. And yeah, I'm just laying out how I made like these rusty, swampy, kind of uh, jungle atmosphere affected weapons. Cool. <laughs> Alrighty, so the first step we're going to do is we're going to sweep on some of the Vallejo oily steel and got a little bit of paint or a little bit of water loaded into my brush and I'll combine that with a little bit of paint. There's not too much of a, I'd say maybe 20% paint to uh, or 20% water to paint, just enough to smooth it out. So it'll uh, lay down on the surface a lot easier. All right, so to start, make sure you use the side of your brush. Get some, uh, get as much coverage out of it as you can. Just like that. Always sweeping sideways. Instead of uh, sketching at a 90 degree angle like a pencil, think of it more like sweeping, mopping, any kind of menial task. Just the base coat. All righty. And then uh, once this coat is dry, I'm going to apply another coat and we'll come right back and start to lay some shadows down. All right, for the second step, I'm going to blend in some shadows. I'm just using black, keeping it really simple. It's Vallejo black. It's about a 50-50 mix Vallejo to the water. And I got a wet brush as always. And remember that like a 90 degree angle, like right here, on his axe is going to kind of tend to catch more light on the upper edge, cast a little bit more of a shadow. So, I mean, it's, you're always going by the rule of cool and fun is number one. So just to get that out of the way, that's why I'm gliding the shadows up and I'm kind of overemphasizing the, the natural uh, shading that would take place. We'll pick out the He's got a little uh, skull on his axe too, kind of a glyphy design. We'll also pick that out separately. And then all these uh, chewed up grooves, just gonna layer the paint in ever so delicately. And you can see I'm getting a lot of control out of my brush because I'm touching more of it to the surface. There's more brush touching the surface than brush that has paint on it, if that, <laughs> if that makes sense. So the tip of the brush has a little bit of paint and I'm kind of using the uh, the unsaturated part as uh, to kind of sponge up and control where I'm throwing the paint down. So just like that. And then for the sake of uh, learning and redundancy, I'll throw it down in the back as well. So we're just feathering it upwards and the paint should be depositing at the end of your stroke. Um, remember that diluted paint doesn't mean there's a huge amount of paint on your brush. It just means that the paint on the palette is thinned down. I think some people get that a little confused and you know they'll they'll you'll see like kind of a raindrop effect hanging off of the brush or maybe there's a, a drop hanging out on the ferrule there. So yeah. Just like that, just sweeping ever so gently. Uh, that's another thing, you know. Be be mindful of the amount of pressure you're you're placing on the miniature and the brush. Um, some people get that like a mud puddling effect, and I think it's from pressing down too hard and then releasing as you're making the stroke with the brush, and it tends to kind of leave a line around that initial imprint. 
and you pull away, and that's where you get your uh, your paint line. As with everything, it's I know it's all kind of metaphorical when I'm I'm explaining it, but it just takes a lot of practice and observation to see how the paint's going to behave. Just like that. Nice. All right, now that our uh, our shadows are dried, I'm gonna lay down a coat of Army Painter's Dark Tone. Get in focus there. Yeah. So, a little bit of a uh, little bit of water on the brush. I'm gonna dip it right into the wash. It's it's not too diluted. The only dilution that's happening is the water that's on the brush. And you're gonna want to work against the wet edge. You know, don't start putting the wash on one end and the other end and have them meet in the middle, start from one end and work from tip to tip. And also, push your wash towards the shadows. It's not going to just magically find its place. It's, you know, take a little care just like, just like you're painting. And if, also you can go back and add a second coat if you want. You can thin it down if, if you don't want to be so heavy handed about it. And just kind of gradually you know, find your, find your uh, preferred dilution. Nothing wrong with doing a few coats. But yeah, just like that. And it's kind of working as, as a, a black line effect, pulling some of those details and edges out. Yeah, so next uh, we're gonna start adding a little bit of color. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is add a little bit of a, kind of a green tone into it. The theme behind this is my orcs are, are jungle orcs. And I don't really have a good way to describe why I'm doing what I'm doing other than it looks cool. So, I've got a little bit of uh, Ortic Olive from P3 and then some Burnt Umber from FW Ink. They do make other, I'm basically using the green to kind of tone out the ink because I want a, a greeny brown. I want it to look gross. So, just kind of following all along the lines that we already laid out with, uh, with the black shadows, I'm going to take some of this green and brown ink mixture and it down with a little bit of water. And I'm just going to gently uh, glaze it over the shadows. I'm not completely covering that um, oily steel base coat. And we'll let it rest in some of the recesses there. Yeah, I don't know. The only way I can really explain this is they're from the jungle, so everything turns green and it's covered in mossy, uh, humid jungle funk. Anyone that's been to Gen Con knows what I'm talking about. More of an urban jungle, but yeah. So do that, and then uh, as I'm working on one side, the other side's drying, and just for saturation purposes, I'm going to go and reapply because I want that tone to really show through. The reason I'm using inks instead of a wash is I just I like the effect that it has on true metallic metals better. I don't know, it has something to do with the way that the, the pigments ground up or whatever, but they seem to kind of bond and work together really well. So there, just like that, getting kind of a dirty, corroded, metallic look, and yeah. Next, it'll be time to add some rust. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is water down some, uh, I'll show you guys. Got some Bloodstone from P3 and a little Kador Red highlight. I've uh, mixed them together on my palette and I have some Bloodstone separate and some of the Kador Red separate. Those are gonna be our rusty tones. So we'll lay down some of the Bloodstone first. And don't be afraid to make it really watery, but remember you don't want the, the sad teardrop hanging out on your brush. And then just uh, ever so slightly, just gonna outline all these rivets. I could use a little more paint. Uh, wash it down on the crevices like that. And then uh, I'm also gonna kind of drag some lines downward from these bolts. It's assuming rain is pouring over the weapon and it's like standing straight up for some reason. Maybe the orc is asleep, but probably not. 
I don't think they sleep. They just walk to different fights. So we're laying in a bloodstone base coat or foundation like so. I'll let the uh, front side dry. Do the same to the back. Get it in those eyes and that the nose on the glyph. Uh, probably not so much on the blade because that's going to get wiped clean every time it chops through one of his enemies. And a little thicker. This is something to play with. Um, mess with it on a, a piece of paper or card if you want to. But honestly, like it's, you want it to look random. So making a, a little mistake here and there with your, your rust coat is almost going to kind of serve to your advantage. Throw some down the back as well. And we'll add a, another layer to increase the saturation, but also I'm not going to completely cover up what I did because I want it to look kind of sporadic. So I'll just add some, uh, some drops or dots here and there, following up on that uh, those streaks running down as well. Do a nice thicker one there. Uh, by thicker, I mean thicker paint, not a wider line, like so. Flip it over to the back, keep practicing. All right. Now I've got a 50-50 mix of the Kador Red Highlight with the Bloodstone. So anyone who's seen, you know, rust in real life, it's never just one color. It's very, very erratic. So this will kind of make it look more realistic. This is uh, the step that you can do more or less of. You know, if you want, you can. If you want to get more uh, detailed, more of a variety of tones, just keep making different mixtures and adding it in. Kind of just do it to your own. Uh, to suit your own preferences. Hit the back with that medium mixture. Drop in the crevices like so. All right, now we're up to the pure orange or Kato Red Highlight. I tend to just speak things in general tones, red, black, blue, but I know a lot of people like to know the names, so I'm trying to provide the information in both forms. And of course, there are powdered pigments out there that you can use, but today we're doing it with paint. Another day in the future, we'll probably be doing it with pigments. It's all about experimentation. And drag it down in some thin lines like so. And you might notice I don't have the miniature attached to anything. That's because I forgot to bring something to attach it to. So I would not recommend just holding it with your fingers like this. But I always forget one crucial thing. Good thing Adam has a bunch of extra adapters and, and an airbrush in one instance. So <laughs> but yeah. So there you can see the finished result and I'm going to let that dry and set and then we can start pulling out the highlights with a brighter silver. All right, so now it's time to throw it on some highlights and lock everything into place. As you can see, I switched brushes. I got this teeny tiny 4.0 Raphael switch from the characteristic yellow handle brushes to a real brush. And the paint is not that diluted this time. I'm aiming for more of a, a one shot, one kill sort of situation, um, but nobody's got to die. So grab a little bit of this uh, Vallejo Silver. It's super bright. It's, it's really common to, uh, or similar to GW's Mithril Silver, but as I say that, I realize they probably have changed the name two or three times 
since I bought my pot of mithril silver. But uh, yeah, just keeping the top-down light source in mind. I'm going to edge highlight along the uh, sides here, but kind of add little skips every now and then because I want it to look rough, banged up, orcified. A little dot on the rivets. And yeah, back in the day, I used to have to buy orcs and carve all the battle damage into them, but now GW just has figured it out and added that to the process. So there's a lot of cool little uh, nicks and dings. And we'll just hit it ever so slightly like that. And you can also uh, add some of your, your own... Uh, or superficial scratch marks if you like. And with edge highlighting, remember, is a good example. The, the top edge of this axe, hang the brush over the edge, like that. Don't try to paint directly on it, use the, the side of the brush. And that way only the raised surface will catch, provided you don't have a big ball of paint on your brush because then it is going to wrap around the edge a little bit so it's kind of a fine art to balancing that out but yeah just like so this is probably the most lengthy part of the process so I think you can all see where this is going thanks for watching um, if you want to see more of what I do I have a blog samsonminis.blogspot.com I'm on Facebook, it's uh, Sam Lenz Artwork. I also have an Instagram. My name is weird on there, but you can type in Sam Lenz and find me. So thanks to Adam, all the people at Tabletop Minions, and all the people for watching too. So we'll see you next time.